used to be Mormon and I went through the secret Mormon temple ceremonies. Now I'm sharing my experience because I believe in openness, honesty, education, and I think informed consent is important, and I wish I'd had that before I went through the temple. Once again, if you are a Mormon and seeing this would make you feel uncomfortable or upset or offend you in any way, please don't watch, please scroll away, please block me. I will be talking about the signs, tokens, penalties, showing pictures, possibly showing videos. If that would be upsetting for you, this content is not for you. In the previous parts, we talked about the initiatory, and then we started talking about the endowment ceremony. Now we're gonna talk about the prayer circle. So now that we've learned all about the handshakes, which are known as tokens, and their accompanying name signs and penalties, we're ready to move on to the prayer circle or the true order of prayer. We also talked about the clothing and how the clothing gets put on, taken off, moved from one side to the other. Now with the robe on your right shoulder, you're ready to learn the true order of prayer. So what is the prayer circle? Basically, after you've gone through the first part of the endowment ceremony and learned all of the tokens, some couples from the audience will get up and make a circle around the altar, which just in case you forgot is this thing right here. For me personally, when I went through for the first time, this was one of the most upsetting parts. It just didn't feel right. So they create this circle and they will repeat all of the tokens, names, signs, and if you were going through before 1990, the penalties. They do this to say a special type of prayer over the names of people that have been written down because for whatever reason, they think these people need special attention from God. And this specific special type of prayer is the true order of prayer. So it's like a very powerful prayer. So for example, a Mormon might write your name down to go on the temple prayer roll if you are sick or injured, if you're struggling in your faith or if you have a mental illness or just are going through something difficult. Now back in the day, all of the names were actually physically written down and submitted into this little box in the temple. It looked like this. These days you can just do it online. You can go onto the temple website and submit names. So when it's time to form the circle, the officiator would say, we would like to invite the witness couple to take their place at the head of the altar. That was the couple that was cosplaying Adam and Eve before, I think. Um, and an equal number of brothers and sisters to join us in the circle, any receiving their own personal endowment. So that's when you're going through for the first time and any who are about to be married are especially invited to join us in the prayer circle at this time. I don't know if it's because of the trauma that I went through when I did this for the first time, but I genuinely do not remember if I was in the prayer circle or not. If I'm remembering right, I don't think that I did it on my first time through the temple because I feel like I remember watching this happen from a distance and it was like I was having an out of body experience and wondering what I'd gotten myself into and what the hell my parents had raised me in. I could be wrong, but I don't remember actually being in the prayer circle until I'd been through the temple several times. Another thing to mention is that the officiator says only the best of feelings should exist in the circle. If any of you have unkind feelings toward any member of this circle, you are invited to withdraw so that the spirit of the Lord may be unrestrained. This sticks out to me because... After my husband and I had been married for a while, um, my in-laws and I did not get along. They had a lot of issues with me. And at one point I went through the temple with my husband and them, and we got in the prayer circle together. And I remember thinking like, shouldn't they leave? Because they have a lot of unkind feelings towards me. I was vindicated years later when they came out and just admitted that they had never liked me. And I thought back to that moment in the prayer circle, I was like, okay, then you shouldn't have been in the circle with me. So all of the patrons that are in the prayer circle um, are gonna sit there and make all of the signs of all of the tokens. All of the signs of each of the tokens that we talked about in the previous videos. Then the officiator says, we have here a list of names of persons who are sick or otherwise afflicted whom we are requested to remember in our prayer. We will place the list upon the altar and request the faith of those present in behalf of these persons. And then they have all the women veil their faces. I'm actually not 100% sure if they still do this. I think that they might have removed that part. But when I went through for the first time and the subsequent times I went through, women had to veil their faces. I no longer have my temple clothes, but I'll use my curtain over here to demonstrate. You would basically look like this. Each brother in the circle will take the sister at his left by the right hand in the patriarchal grip which is this one, just in case you forgot. Each of you bring your left arm to the square and rest it upon the shoulder or arm of the person at your left. The brethren and sisters in the circle will repeat the words of the prayer. 
So here is kind of what that looks like. So up in front, you'll see these people in a circle. Um, and this is at the point where they are repeating the um, last sign, which is the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, which is the one that we talked about in the last video, where everybody puts their hands above their head and while lowering them says, oh God, hear the words of my mouth three times. This is a lot to digest if the religion that you've been a part of your whole life seems nothing like this and they give you zero preparation for what's gonna happen. Here's another example from a different angle. So after all of this, when it's time for the actual prayer, the officiator kneels at the altar and makes the sign of the second token of the Aaronic Priesthood, which is the one where you have your hand, your right hand in cupping shape and your left arm to the square. And then the officiator starts giving the prayer and he gives it just like a sentence at a time because everybody in the circle is going to repeat after him everything he says. It sounds weird, but actually being there, witnessing it with zero preparation is a whole other thing. But I want you to have a better idea of what this looks like. So I am gonna show you some videos that were taken with an undercover video camera. These are from the New Name Noah YouTube channel. You can find them very easily, but they're very long. Like I said, the temple ceremony is really long. I'm just gonna show you the snippets that we're talking about. First, I'm gonna show you the prayer circle chanting, oh God, hear the words of my mouth. moment of silence for 19 year old me who was absolutely flabbergasted in that moment. Now I'm going to show you just a snippet of the prayer where the officiator says part of the prayer, the rest of the circle repeats it. As I mentioned before, there is very little preparation for what is going to happen as a Mormon going through this for the first time. Nobody is allowed to tell you what's going to happen. You don't know about the handshakes. You don't know about the clothing. You don't know about the movie. You don't know about the prayer circle. You don't know about the chanting. There is a temple prep class you can take, but it does not tell you what is going to happen. I think that is wrong. I think it is so wrong, especially to put young people in this position where they feel immense social pressure to carry through with this, give them the option to leave before they know what's going to happen, and then just spring this upon them. After the prayer is complete, um, everybody in the circle releases their grip and the officiator rises. The women are able to unveil their faces and everybody in the circle returns to their seats. After everybody is sitting down, it's time to uncover the veil. In the next part, we will talk about going through the veil in the temple, as well as the marks that are on the veil that correspond to the marks that are on the garments. Also, let me know if you guys have any questions because after I'm finished making this series and going through each of these things, I will go back and make a video answering frequently asked questions.